So for instance, let's say that I create a mesh plane. I'm going to delete some faces. Let's say mesh, edit, delete faces. I'm going to mirror this over. Now let's say as I'm modeling, I'm just I'm kind of just going and just doing some things. Okay, and I start to build out a few different pieces or, or elements, right? But if you notice here, um, these are facing the wrong direction. Now. If I bring these all into here, and I hide that, you're going to notice that in the display, you can see that there are these dark lines. That indicates that the face of these, the faces here, are not consistent with the faces on the other side, i.e. the normals, right, or the orientation of this mesh um, is not consistent. And you can see that that follows the um, the uh, shape, essentially, of, of these basic elements. Now, if, for instance, I take that last step and I use the component mesh unify normals, at the very end, after it's weld, it will take that mesh and it will ensure that all of those faces are oriented the same direction. So you can see all those dark lines are now gone. Okay, And um, that's huge, right? Because if, for instance, those are not all facing the same direction, uh, the likelihood of you having a mesh that has um, uh, holes in it or is not watertight or fails when it's 3D printed um, is probably pretty high. So you want to try to avoid that uh, you know, as much as possible. So I'm just going to delete this and go right back over to my um, my mesh component again. And, uh, and I'll just set those in here. Excellent. Okay, so that, that's what's really going on with that last step, that unify normal step here. All right, so in addition to um, to not only, you know, say, smoothing a single component, um, the next step that you'd probably be interested in is looking at how you could array these components, right? So, you know, one component is really great, but what about having multiple components, right? What if you, if you wanted to have 10 or 15 or 100 of these components? have them all joined, have them all smoothed continuously, and be able to output that for fabrication. That would, be, that would be really quite fantastic. So what we want to do is show you guys um, a really nice, efficient um, workflow for doing that. And that's going to involve something called morphing. So morphing is the smooth transformation of one entity into another. And that's typically achieved through the sampling of a base in a target space. Here you can see on the far left um, a kind of simple primitive, and on the far right that primitive after it's undergone um, some transformation. Everything in between is the interpolation from the left to the right. So this is component morphing. So when we're talking about these mesh primitives and you know the subdivision surfaces, what we're really talking about are components. And components are really a fundamental aspect of parametric thinking. Um, seeing that, as you've noticed already, as we've been building out the, the kind of grasshopper files this afternoon, um, the, those files, uh, the definitions, they're essentially just large assemblies of many smaller parts. Now, in order to be able to do this, we are going to have to take a little bit of a, 
uh, kind of divergence away from meshes momentarily and talk about surfaces. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can take those mesh primitives and populate them onto a surface using a technique called surface boxes. Now surfaces are a type of NERDS geometry. Uh, they're defined by a two-dimensional parameter space. So someone had asked earlier about the uh, UV space of a mesh. And no, meshes do not have a UV space the way that surfaces do. Um, uh, they're a connectivity network. Uh, of vertices arranged into collections of basic elements or faces. Um, but a surface, the way that it operates, is, is by way of a two-dimensional space. And that, that space is called um, U and V. So here we can see, you know, a kind of surface and the control points that make up a surface, the way that they're all connected, allowing for that continuous UV space. And if you modify the control points of a surface, for instance, you'll see that um, the kind of underlying um, topology of the surface will change. And you know, that's very different than what we're looking at with meshes. If you, if you move a vertex around on a mesh, it doesn't change the topology of the mesh, right? It doesn't change the connectivity network. It just changes what it looks like. If you move the control points of a surface around, um, it will um, absolutely uh, change the uh, space or the, the, of the surface. So what we're going to do is take a look at how to define um, first a surface um, in Grasshopper. Uh, we'll build it in Rhino, and then we'll bring it to Grasshopper. We'll look at how to subdivide the surface into surface boxes, and then look at how to take our component and then array it. Okay. Now, the kind of variation that we're going to be looking at is referred to as an implicit variation. So the kind of deformation of each one of our mesh primitives will really be derived from the underlying surface. Um, so the control will be really at the level of the component, um, what it looks like, and then the surface, uh, kind of what its shape is, um, and, and then all the uh, arrayed components will really be a byproduct of, of that interaction. So let's go back over here to Rhino. Now, in Rhino, if I copy my component over, you'll see that these are still separate elements. The nice thing is that in Rhino, under the Mesh Tools, under Mesh Edit, right, um, Let's see. Oh, okay, um, it doesn't seem to be in here. Let's see, edit, join. I guess we can just use the regular join. We can do the same thing we did in Grasshopper. So if you remember in Grasshopper, we, we said join, weld, unify normals. And in Rhino, what we're going to do is we're going to just take these three and we're going to join them. Edit, join. So that three meshes are joined into one. Okay, so this is now one mesh. And that'll just really help us out a lot when we start to move into uh, populating them so that we don't have to keep track of each one of these as separate elements, but instead we'll just have this one element that can be distributed. So this is our mesh primitive, right? This is what we want to bring into Grasshopper. Um, 